Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are going to be making a dress. This is a sewing vlog because this is a pattern that is still being tested. So I'm a pattern tester for this pattern and I've never done that before. And I wanted to show like, I don't know what that's like. There's already been a lot of feedback on the pattern so far. So I feel like most things I say are gonna be like groundbreaking, but I am definitely still very excited to try out this dress because it's a Bridgerton inspired silhouette. So it has like a band up here, like um, an empire waistline, some puffy sleeves and then a long skirt. And I'm not gonna make it the full maxi length because I don't wear maxi dresses. So I'm probably gonna make it midi length with a bottom ruffle. If I can, I saw that somebody else did exactly that and I wanna try it because I like long dresses, but not maxi. I'm starting off by making a chai and I just really need this. I have been so tired today. I've already taken a nap and it's only noon. I was actually woken up this morning because Daniel called me and that was at like 8.50. So I was sleeping in really late and he like needed me to bring him something. And then I edited a video and did a little bit of work and then I was so tired. I just laid on the couch to watch a little bit of YouTube because Exo McKenna put out a new video. But then I fell asleep partway through and ended up going through like three YouTube videos. So it wasn't like a super long nap, but it was probably at least an hour. We are in the third trimester of pregnancy. So this makes sense. I'm not like getting down on myself by any means about it. Oh gosh, I always make a mess. I'm making the foam for my chai now and my camera's about to die. So that might ruin this i usually make it in like a cup and then i pour it into a bigger cup with ice because obviously the ice takes up a lot of space and the foam will fill up the rest of that little bit but anyway so yeah yesterday i printed out the pattern and cut out all my pattern pieces and i've never worked with such silky fabric before so I think I have procrastinated a little bit on starting this project just because I don't know how it's gonna go. Like I usually sew with linen or cotton and that's just super easy fabric to work with. And this one is just definitely very slinky, but there is interfacing on a lot of the bodice pieces where it is more structured. So I think that it'll be fine. I think the interfacing is definitely going to help a lot to keep things solid. So these are all of the pattern pieces. We have the sleeves, bodice pieces, pockets, and then this is the back panel. But it's a really pretty green floral rayon. I think these are probably just like, they look like little daisies. And this dress might end up being my maternity photos dress, depending on how this goes. I have a friend coming down, Nicole. If you guys listen to my podcast or you follow me on my other page, you should know who Nicole is. And she's coming down to um, take my maternity photos and I'm so excited. I feel like the belly is in just the right size range to still be cute and like I still feel cute. So <laughs> I think it'll be a good time. Let me show you a little bump date. Okay, this dress really conceals it. Like I think I could go out and no one would even know because it's very um, puffy. <laughs> That's kind of what we're working with. So you still can't even really see it. <laughs> anyway, it's still cute and I like it and I'm currently 31 weeks. I'm going to transfer these instructions to my phone. Um, I usually just airdrop the PDF to my phone and open it with books. So if you have an iPhone, we have this app called Books. <laughs> and anytime I have PDF instructions for a project, I will do that because sometimes I'm like watching something on my laptop or I just don't have room to have this out as well, which is pretty much the case of today. I'm trying to keep my sewing more contained to one space when I'm doing it because I have this like long desk, like there's plenty of room for my machine to be on it and this like small ironing board. So I really think that I should be utilizing that more often. And especially when like the rest of my house is clean and um, <laughs> I don't wanna mess it up. I like to just keep it contained into here because it's a smaller space and I feel like I spread out a lot less. But I did use the kitchen to cut just because it was just a lot easier to do that out there. So if you can see this, this is the basic outline of the dress. Again, it's very Regency 
Bridgerton inspired. But first we're going to add interfacing to the center front panel, the side front panels, and the side back panels. So that's like pretty much this entire thing. So what I do for interfacing, and maybe not everybody does this, I don't know, but I just lay my fabric directly on top of the interfacing and then I iron, I can just cut it out from there. So I'm not getting like any more or any less than I need. I don't know how other people interface. I guess I've never watched someone do it like closely enough to where I could get their method. But yeah, this fabric is so delicate. I'm like really nervous. <laughs> I'm scared. Look at it. It's like so floppy, but it's gonna be really, really pretty if this turns out. Like I really think this is gonna be a favorite dress of mine because Again, I just really don't stray away using more difficult fabrics. So we'll see how this turns out. I grabbed the pattern pieces because I forgot what all of these are called. We're going to take our center front, which will be this piece. Match up your side front panels to your center front panel. So that's these. It's like a puzzle. Oh, I just realized I didn't cut notches into these. I am going to quickly do that. Match up your side front panels to your center front panel along the curved edge aligning the notches. Use enough pins to make sure you can sew the seam exact. Okay, it's all pinned together. It looks right to me. <laughs> After I did the notches, everything made a lot more sense. So hopefully this will fit and be okay. Okay, so the bodice shell, I'm calling, is done. And it looks like it fits perfectly. I would like to like clip some curves because it looks like kind of pointy, but that might change when I have the actual back on it and it's tighter. It hits like right at the top of my belly, which is perfect. And, and then while I was at it, I also did the lining. It'll look pretty on the inside and not like a bunch of interfacing. That'll keep the interfacing from getting all fuzzy and weird as well. There's that. Now I need to do the sleeves. So these sleeves have kind of a funky shape. I don't know how to explain it. I've never worked with sleeves this shape before, but as you can see, they've got like a pointy edge. The fabric is so flowy. I really doubt that you can actually see that. Okay, so I actually finished one of the sleeves and I don't know if I'm like super in love with the way that these sleeves are constructed, but I think that like it's gonna look cute, but I just don't know. I feel like it's a bit overcomplicated. I don't know. When I do the second one, I will see if I was just like, if it took me a long time because I was just confused. You know, the first time you make something, it tends to take a bit longer. This is what we've got. It's very droopy. Like, I think the point of these sleeves is that they are obviously puffy. And my sleeves, I don't think, are going to be very puffy just because this fabric is very droopy. And we're going to do French seams on these to close them up. Hopefully, this bottom one won't feel too tight. Yeah, you can see it just looks droopy. It's not very, it doesn't have a lot of life in it. But I think if I wanted it to have more life, I could maybe put some like tool or something. I've seen that in a few other dresses, like uh, ready made dresses, but I don't know. So I'm gonna make the second one now and I'm gonna film it so that you can see. Basically you just take these corners and you fold them down to look like this, you like line this up here and then we stitch that across and that's the hem for the top of the sleeve, like the shoulder part. And then for the bottom, there's a facing piece, which sometimes when you have an elastic casing, um, pattern makers will have you do a facing for that. So basically you stitch this on, you know, right sides together as you do. And then once you've done that, you flip it around and then 
the inside of the sleeve looks finished. As you can see, this is the right side and that's the wrong side of the fabric. So it just makes it look more finished, I think. And it also just creates an elastic channel without having to do a rolled hem because rolled hems on curved lines can be kind of difficult. So I think because the sleeve is curved, that's why the pattern designer decided to do a facing for the bottom. This has been very easy to put together so far. Like even with this being a pattern that is not finished yet, I haven't had any issues yet. Like there's been a lot of feedback in the Facebook group though of other people like, hey, this didn't line up with this or whatever else. And I'm like, uh, everything's lining up for me. So I don't know. I haven't gotten to the part that most people had feedback on. So maybe that's why. I think it was mostly feedback for the back panel, but I have found the instructions to be pretty straightforward so far. So we will see. Everything has been sewn and now it's time for the hem. I mean, the elastic. <laughs> so I've pre-cut my elastic according to the pattern. Normally with patterns like this, the elastic is just sort of like left up to your own discretion, not really based on a specific sizing, but with the other sleeve, it was enough. So hopefully it will be fine. We're also doing more elastic on the back because there's going to be like a fake shearing panel. So I do like shearing and I finally figured out how to do it on my machine. I even considered doing like a real shearing panel, but I'm gonna stick to the pattern because I am testing it and I wanna see if there's anything confusing. Super cute. I just put two pins on either side and then I go over it with my sewing machine like three or four times. So now we're going to make them a little tube situation by doing a French seam. Basically, you just sew together, wrong sides together, and then you flip it, clip the seam allowance, and then sew it right sides together so that that raw edge is encased inside of the seam. Okay, I made my first mistake. I sewed the wrong part of the sleeve, so just like, Hopefully I've cut out where I said what part to sew. Um, but we are now going to attach the sleeves to the bodice after I fixed it. Um, after that big hubbub, I did not do a French seam. If it bothers me in the end, I will just zigzag it, but I just decided it's best that I don't mess with that anymore because I almost had to redo the entire sleeve because this fabric is extremely delicate and having to take out stitching from it. I, I did rip it a few times because, I mean, I had to like really pull and I just really don't wanna mess with that anymore. So all that said, we we are going to match up our armpit seams. So as you can see, it's like a V. And then as you can see here, also a V. But look, this is where I had to fix, <laughs> like unpick and I put a hole in it. So hopefully that doesn't become too big of an issue. I might have to do some mending on that, like after the sleeve is assembled and I can see where that hole lines up because unfortunately, I don't know if I can really change that. So if I put, the V at this V, it, oh wait, maybe it does line up. Now this one, let's do the same thing, matching up the armpit. And actually this entire seam will be encased in the facing, or not in the facing, in the lining. It shouldn't be visible like at all. Okay, I'm gonna sew on these sleeves and then we will attach the facing this is the facing here. Why do I keep calling it a facing? <laughs> the lining. We're gonna attach the lining right sides together just like this and you're gonna line up those princess seams here and we're going to stitch it right sides together all along here. And with this sort of a situation, um, you then flip it 
to the inside and then you understitch to hold this in place so that it isn't showing on the right side of the fabric because sometimes it can roll out. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're not skipping understitching when it comes to this. And I think I'm gonna switch to white thread when I understitch this because this lining is white and yeah, I'm gonna do the top thread white and the bottom thread still green, I think. Be I, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure out which one I need to switch because I really don't want the green thread like poking out on this because that's what it looks like and that's just like not very pretty. I'd rather have white. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've done a little trial run. I love this whole situation. This is so pretty. Like I really, really like this. Um, the bodice is just gorgeous. So I haven't stay stitched the lining down so you can see if you skip it, it just comes up and it's not cute at all, but it's so pretty. It literally hits like right at the top of my bump, which is perfect. I love it so much. It's really, really pretty. And like, I like that the bodice has the structure of the fabric because of the interfacing but the sleeves still have that like flowy so it's almost as if i'm using two different fabrics but it's the same so anyway i wanted to show like a try on because this always helps me feel like almost a second wind when i'm working on a project if i'm getting like tired or something like putting it on always helps and i figured maybe it would be helpful to see like how things are going. I'm going to stay stitch and then we're gonna start on the back panel. Okay, so we're onto the fake shearing and this fabric is so slippery. So I've put a bunch of pins in it, kind of like quilting basting style. And I transferred all of the markings from the pattern piece. So we're creating five channels for elastic and then we will thread all of that elastic through and then we will have a little stretchy panel so that it's easier to take on and off. Basically, this just eliminates the need for a zipper and makes the garment just a little bit, I don't know, easier to make, easier to put on and take off. And I almost forgot to change my bobbin thread. I did white thread for the bobbin, as you can see the lining. It looks really nice with that. I'm super glad that I did that. I think it would have looked really weird if I didn't, so. I took a break to have dinner, so it's been a, a few hours, <laughs> but I'm kind of just wanting to finish the bodice maybe and cut out the skirt. No, I'm not gonna cut out the skirt. I just wanna finish the bodice before I go to bed. It's currently 8.41. And in another phase of life, I would have continued sewing until it was done. But I want to take a bath and like go lay in my bed and watch a show or something. I sewed all of the channels. I don't know if you can see that like a little bit darker stitching. There's a little bit of purple water soluble marker on there as well. And there are lots of stitch lines. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and five elastics. So every other channel, I'm putting in one of these pieces of elastic. And you can already see that it's bunching up and it looks a lot like shirring, honestly, which is the point. <laughs> the pattern did tell me how long to make these elastics, so I'm just following the pattern exactly. I've been listening to Emily Henry's new book, Happy Place, while I do this. And it's just like so nice to, I, I love Emily Henry. And when I found out she came out with this book, well, I didn't, normally I'm like anticipating new books from authors that I um, read, but I completely like forgot that she was coming out with something new. So it was a pleasant surprise for me. And it was like a multi-week wait on my library app because again, I wasn't expecting it. So I didn't put in the hold very early. I think it was like, I don't know, they have like two copies of it and it was like 40 people waiting per copy. So it would have taken like literally months to get to me. So I just decided to um, buy it on Audible and I have a bunch of credits anyway. So technically I bought it a couple months ago, <laughs> but I really like audiobooks specifically. It's perfect for moments like this, but I do still have, and like most of the books that I read, I'm reading through audiobooks because I just have a hard time sitting and reading, but there are moments where I really miss just sitting and reading, like in bed at night, like sometimes I'll get the urge, but then I don't have a book to read, or let's say a book that I'm like wanting to read, because I have a couple on my Kindle that I'm like partway through, but they're kind of boring, <laughs> so I've lost interest. 
Um, I just need to like pick a book that I know that I'm gonna want to read and have it ready for me on my Kindle. But anyway, what are you guys reading right now? I'd love to know if you've made it this far in the video. Tell me what you're reading this summer. If you had any reading goals this year, how are you doing on your reading goal? I'm doing okay. Last year I definitely did a lot better, but I honestly think it's because I read like seven Ice Planet Barbarian books in like a month. <laughs> So I got like way ahead on my reading goal and I was able to like slow down my reading a bit because I was so ahead. But I think I set a goal to read like 35 books this year, which that's what I said last year too. And I think I ended up reading more than that, like slightly more than that. So I don't know, I was trying to keep it realistic because I'm having a baby this year and I didn't want to like disappoint myself because although that's a silly thing to be disappointed with yourself over, I definitely would. <laughs> I'd be sad that I didn't reach my goal, especially because I love reading so much. But anyway, again, tell me what you're reading and if you have a reading goal, how are you doing? The bodice is done and I am really, really happy with this. My stomach is so full right now, it feels huge. So I'm trying to cut off the camera there. Anyway, it fits really nicely. It definitely feels like a little tight if anything. And I think that if I was to do this again, which I'm probably gonna make another version, um, I would want the sleeves to be a little bit longer just because I find them like riding up a lot. Even just like an inch longer would probably be good. But I actually don't hate that the sleeves are kind of droopy. I think it's, I think it's actually kind of cute. And, um, oh, let me show you the back. So the fake shearing worked out really nicely. Um, something that other people had mentioned is that the back panel was a little bit shorter than the rest of the, like, than the side panel. So I had to just sort of like, not grade it in, but I just kind of like cut it to match it. Like kind of like curved this to match. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it hits like right at the top of my belly, which is perfect for like a maternity dress, which this is not a maternity pattern, but it's perfect for it, honestly. Tomorrow is the skirt and the skirt is really easy. It's literally just a gathered skirt with pockets. And I'm gonna see if I have enough fabric to do the bottom ruffle, but that'll just depend. Um, I did buy three yards and I think that it called for like two and a half, but I just got extra just in case I messed it up because you know, I don't make like super intricate things like this very often. So I like to get a little bit of extra, especially if I like the fabric. I will see you guys tomorrow when we do the skirt. Good morning. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> I had a, a long morning of napping and chilling and my neighbor has been shooting all day long. So if you hear that, that's what that is. Um, I've been waiting for him to stop, but he just keeps going. So I am currently testing out some serge pieces because um, I'm doing the skirt now and I want to serge the skirt because this fabric, as you can see, is very fragile. <laughs> it frays a lot. So two layers, with my current settings has been fine. Like it isn't acting up at all. One layer, it gets a bit bunchy. I don't want to like mess with too much here because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it back to what it was, but I've noticed that if I just like leave a long thread tail and I just kind of do this, it makes it flatten out. And I think also if I, if and when I press it, that'll help too. So yeah, it's just like not as tight. Like I can tell the tension like isn't tight enough. Oh, maybe that would explain that. One of these was off. Some of these were like off there. Okay, maybe that'll fix it. Anyway, point is we're doing the skirt now and I'm super excited. I already cut out the skirt panels and attached well, I pinned the pocket pieces to it because this skirt does have pockets, thankfully. If it didn't, I probably would have added them because I am just a pocket lover. I think that it's like honestly essential for women's dresses. Pattern told us to mark it four inches from the top. So that's what I did and here we are. I'm just going to serge pocket on. I guess I could sew it. Maybe I should sew it instead. I'm thinking I'm just gonna serge it to it. Next thing, since now all of the pockets are attached, is to put them right sides facing and serge them together. Mm, something that I also normally do is, yeah, and that's like a sewing machine thing. I also normally secure the pocket, like I will top stitch on top of the stitch that attached the pocket to the skirt just because pockets can be kind of slouchy, especially with this fabric, I don't think I should skip it. So I'm gonna do that really quick. All right, it 
it's time to gather the skirt. And I made a lining for the skirt and it's not the same size as the skirt. So I'm kind of confused because I used the skirt as a pattern piece. And like whether I do it this way or I do it this way, it's not the same size. But the lining was not a part of the pattern. I just wanted to line my skirt because it is pretty see-through. <laughs> I don't think you can tell how see-through it is, but it's very thin material. I'm going to gather the skirt up and attach it and maybe I can gather the lining separately because it's definitely like big enough to gather but maybe it just needs to be gathered separately and it won't be as tightly gathered. I don't know. We'll see. I'm honestly like not, it's not my number one concern to be honest. has been attached. It looks really good. I think I'm happy with the length as well. Now I'm gonna figure out how to attach this lining and then I'm going to serge this because I hate leaving this raw like that. So I'm gonna serge it <laughs> if I can, but let's see how I can make this lining work here. It's not bad. I think I can do it. Okay. I'm going to attach this. Okay, guys. So I have everything attached. I had the lining. Um, it was too long, so I cut it shorter. And I think that I like it without the bottom ruffle, so I don't think I'm going to do that. But it hits like just below my knee, so it's like midi length. Um, but you can see it's really cute for maternity. Like, I love it. It is a little bit like a tent. <laughs> But normally for maternity pictures, which I think this is what I'm going to use for maternity pictures, you have your hand down here quite a bit. So anyway, it'll be at least one of my outfits. It's just like really pretty. I love the fabric. I feel like the fabric was like the perfect choice for this dress. Um, it's nice and flowy, but structured up here. I just think it's great. So the last thing there is to do is to hem it. And the back of the dress looks a little longer than the front. Oh... <laughs> It's because of my belly. I just realized that. <laughs> okay. I was thinking I'd have to straighten out the hem, but I'm just going to leave that because post baby, I don't want the front to be longer. So I'm just going to hem it as I normally would. Here I was thinking that I like made this huge mistake because I was looking at it. I'm like, I accidentally made a high low dress, but it's because of my stomach. Okay. That makes sense. Anyway. All right. I am going to hem it and then we're going to do some final shots. Mm -hmm. 